In the voice of Russia World Service, welcome to another edition of the Christian Message from Moscow. The life of all those blessed people who have embraced wholeheartedly the Lord Jesus Christ is full of unending struggle, says St. Luke. What is this struggle? It's not against flesh and blood, but a much more serious struggle against spiritual wickedness in high places. Those were the words of Orthodox Saint St. Luke Voina Yasinetsky from his sermon on the struggle against spiritual wickedness in high places. Today we shall acquaint you with this sermon, but first let us become acquainted with St. Luke himself. St. Luke, in secular life, Valentin Wojny was born in 1877 in Crimea, in the town of Kirch, in the family of a pharmacist. He inherited his religious beliefs from his parents. In childhood, he displayed remarkable aptitude for drawing. Simultaneously with gymnasium, he graduated from an art school in Kiev. He was planning to enter Petersburg Art Academy when right before the entrance exams he was assailed by doubts. He reflected on whether he had the moral right to devote his life to doing what he liked instead of doing something that might be of help to those in need. These reflections inspired him to opt for a medical career. He entered the medical department of Kiev University that bore the name of St. Vladimir. At the same time, he was most attentively studying the Holy Writ, particularly the New Testament. The young medic was most affected by the Saviour's words in chapter 9 of the book of Matthew. The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore to the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. After graduating with honors from the university, Valentin Wojna Yesinetsky, unexpectedly for everyone, announced his decision to become a village doctor, so as to help the impoverished folk. However, as fate would have it, before becoming a village doctor, he had to work as an army doctor. The Russo-Japanese War broke out in 1904, and the young medic was dispatched to a military hospital in the Far East. There he acquired priceless experience, saving the lives of soldiers wounded in action. At the hospital he made the acquaintance of his future wife. Anna Lanskaya was employed there as Sister of Mercy. After the war, the couple settled in a village in Kursk, Gubernia, central Russia, where Valentin Wojna Yesinetsky continued his medical practice. Thanks to his talent and selflessness, soon he became very widely known. Ailing folk came to him from all surrounding regions. Thus once a blind man who regained eyesight after an operation brought a whole succession of blind folk to the doctor, all desperate to regain their lost vision. Simultaneously with medical practice, Valentin Wojny Yesenetsky found time for scientific research. He was interested in local anesthesia, which was still a mystery to many medics back then. 
he continued his scientific research in one of the surgical clinics of Moscow. There, in 1916, at the height of World War I, the doctor defended a thesis which was acknowledged as the best paper trailblazing a new road for medicine. During the war, army doctor Voyna Yasinetsky was in charge of a military hospital at the front. Thanks to his generous knowledge in the sphere of purulent surgery, he saved many wounded who initially seemed beyond hope. He laid out this priceless knowledge in his book Sketches on Purulent Surgery, which won international acclaim. Early in 1917, the surgeon's wife fell gravely ill. In a bid to save her, the family relocated to Central Asia, the town of Tashkent. And there, Valentin Voyny Sinetsky was offered the position of senior physician of the town hospital. And it was there, in Tashkent, that the Voyny Sinetsky family learnt the news of the October Socialist Revolution of 1917. <laughs> In 1919, one of the staff workers of the hospital, which Wojna Yasinetsky intended to fire for thieving and drunkenness, reported on him to the Bolsheviks. The doctor was arrested and miraculously escaped being executed. He was finally released. In the meantime, his wife, unable to deal with the stress of seeing her husband arrested, died. After her death, Valentin Wojna Yasinetsky entrusted his children to the care of a wonderful woman, scrub nurse Sofia Vilietska, who became like a mother to them. Meanwhile, he went on to become a clergyman and later a monk, receiving the new name of Luke. This was indeed a brave feat, considering the Bolshevist reprisals against the clergy at the time. For his devotion and unswerving orthodox faith, Luke was arrested a number of times and sent into exile. However, even there, he acted in his capacity of doctor and clergyman, saving people in the flesh and spirit. On June 22, 1941, fascist Germany perfidiously attacked the Soviet Union. Our country was thus drawn into the vortex of World War II. Luke Wojnowicz-Sonetsky, by that time a bishop, was appointed to oversee the military hospitals of Krasnoyarsk region in Siberia. Every day, he performed several highly complicated surgical operations, all the while continuing his scientific research. In 1942, Bishop Luke was elevated to the rank of archbishop and appointed to the Krasnoyarsk throne. And in 1944, he was transferred from Siberia to Tambov Eparchy in central Russia. In those years, he wrote his priceless book, Spirit, Soul, Body, which won broad recognition among the Orthodox Christians. The powers that be highly acknowledged Archbishop Luke's scientific research and awarded him the Stalin Prize in the first degree. He transferred a major part of the prize money for the needs of children who'd suffered in the war years. After the war in 1946, Archbishop Luke became the head of the Crimea Eparchy, all the while continuing his medical, scientific and pedagogical work. Towards the end of his life, he lost his eyesight. Archbishop Luke died on June 11, 1961, the day of memory of all saints of the Russian land. The year 1996 saw the invention of his holy relics. Presently, the relics of St. Luke are kept at the Holy Trinity Cathedral of the town of Simferopol in the Crimea. The Jubilee Bishops' Council of the Russian Orthodox Church in the year 2000 consecrated Archbishop Luke a saint of the Orthodox Church. Many people turn to him in their prayers and receive help and guidance from him. Besides priceless scientific research, St. Luke left behind a legacy of several volumes of sermons. Two of them have miraculously reached our day in sound recording. We would like to offer you one of them today, on the struggle against spiritual wickedness in high places. Которые в 
Всем сердцем возлюбили Господа нашего Иисуса Христа. The life of all those blessed people who have embraced wholeheartedly the Lord Jesus Christ is full of unending struggle, says St. Luke. What is this struggle? It's not against flesh and blood, but a much more serious struggle against spiritual wickedness in high places. Blessed are those who conduct this ceaseless struggle with the evil spirits. And how we weep for those of our near and dear ones who are ignorant of this struggle, who laugh and ridicule our belief in evil demons. For indeed, for devilry and for the devil himself, it is so adventitious when people do not believe in them, never reflect on them, never awaken to the sense of their imminent proximity. For a hidden unknown enemy is much more dangerous than a visible one. Listen to how the Holy Apostle Paul speaks of these evil spirits in high places and about our struggle against them. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, in high places. Oh, how vast is this damnedest army of the diabolic! Countless is their dark horde, implacably, tirelessly, day and night, persisting in its attempts to make us, believers in God, stray onto the path of disbelief and ungodliness. This diabolic army bears a terrible name, that of enemies of Christ, enemies of the Lord. And just as in the host of good and holy angels, there are nine angelic hosts, so there are higher and lower ranked among the horde of evil spirits in high places. These higher ranked ones wage a struggle against those of the believers who are particularly devoted servants of Christ the Lord, and these are the saints and the righteous. Immensely difficult is their task. There are also evil spirits of average powers, who ceaselessly fight with all of us, the imperfect and weak Christians. Our struggle with them is very difficult and relentless, for the intellect of these servants of Satan much surpass our human mind, for they neither sleep nor eat. They devote all of their existence to their evil task, that of destroying, tempting God's people. There are also the petty evil spirits, whose task is not all that demanding. All they do is push further and further into the darkness those weak, unfortunate ones who have already made their choice to love the darkness, evil and falsehood better than light, goodness and truth. So how do we, thus assailed by countless swarms of evil devilry, how do we put up a fight against them? Where can we get the strength for such a struggle? The answer to this question was given us by Holy Apostle Paul, who says, My brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. However, it's not with our strength, our mind and our persistent striving towards victory that we shall fight and overcome this dark, ominous evil force, but only with the force of the Lord, with His help. Without Him we are powerless. The sole main weapon of the diabolic evil horde is untruth, the falsehood that is their very spiritual essence. And only with the force of truth can we vanquish the vile falsehood of the diabolic evil force, only with truth. Only if we forever grid up our lines with truth of Christ shall we triumph over the diabolic enemies of Christ and all of us. And this truth we may embrace only through devoutly observing Christ's commandments and by ceaseless prayer. 
and only in reward for this tireless work shall we be granted the armor of truth. This is something we must never forget, particularly on the day of malice, the day when every kind of evil multiplies and swarms around us. And then Apostle Paul says, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Oh, how beautiful shall be our feet if they shall always rush to where the poor, the sick, and the destitute require our assistance, if we shall always hurry to seek counsel with the godly and shun all ungodly counsel, for then our feet shall be protected by the force of God, and no evil shall touch them. And then Apostle Paul says also, Taking the shield of faith, wherever with ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You see, we possess the shield of faith, and if we wholeheartedly have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and observe his commandments unfailingly, he shall never forsake us, and we shall be his friends through his holy word, and faith in him will protect us. O oh Lord, Lord, what other protection do we need if you are always in our hearts and minds, in our very beings, if your presence within us shields us from all attempts to corrupt our hearts and minds? What other help do we need? Of course, of course, this is enough, and more than enough for us. Therefore, if we are so protected, all that remains for us to do is take up the two-edged sword, as did the ancient warriors. Now hear what Apostle Paul said about the two-edged sword. The word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing into the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So, this is the sword we require, that sword which is the word of God, before which all demons and the devil himself shake in fear, for the word of God vanquishes them all. And if we always wield this precious holy weapon, the weapon of God's word, we need fear no enemy, for they have long since been vanquished by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so remember, my brothers and sisters, that we cannot fight the spiritual wickedness in high places on our own. Know ye that all our hopes must be placed only with the Lord Jesus Christ, who, with the foot of his cross, bruised the head of the ancient serpent. Amen. You were listening to a sermon of the Orthodox Saint St. Luke Wojna Jesinecki about the struggle against spiritual wickedness in high places. It was read and subsequently recorded in 1956 in the church of the town of Alushta in Crimea. And there we end another edition of the Christian Message from Moscow. It was directed by Vladimir Diomin, editor of text and music Tatiana Shvitsova, sound engineers Yelena Gashenikova and Nadezhda Smirnova, and your hosts Svetlana Yekmenko. All the very best to you, and may God save you from all evil, visible and invisible. Before we sign off, listen to Orthodox Church chants dedicated to Lent.